In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to build an activity feed, one that looks something like this. If you're building any kind of social network type of application or any type of collaborative app where users uh, want to follow each other and keep track of what's going on in the application, then this is something that's very handy and helpful to have um, as a feature. So for example, uh, this is uh, an activity feed that would be for a, a demo project management type of application. So every single user that triggers some type of action in the app would also trigger um, an event, an activity event. And this just shows up in this list. So you have a history of everything that's happened with the newest event happening at the top. So for example, Chandler here completed a task and that's the name of the task. We have the date and time, uh, or actually we don't see the time, but we could certainly display the time uh, to uh, have a really down to the minute um, look at when everything happened and the type of event is also color coded so that you can really see what's going on a little bit easier um, and also we have the name and the image of the people who triggered the event so uh, we can see you know who's doing what so i'm going to show you how to build something like this so that you can apply this type of feature to your application and i'll just point out a couple of handy components that you'll want to keep in mind when you're building a feed like this Okay, so the first thing you want to do is create a new data type for the activity event. So I'm going to call this activity event. And this, you'll want to create a separate record for every single event that happens, every change, every assignment, um, every status update, you know, anytime somebody follows someone, any um, thing that needs to be logged is going to be a separate activity event record. So that's why we're creating a separate data type for it, because that way each event can have its own timestamp. We can have um, a reference to the user who triggered the event um, and other fields that uh, might be necessary for your app. So I'm going to create just two basic fields to get this started. The first one is uh, the description of the event itself. And this is just going to be a plain text. Uh, so this will be where you actually save. When you create this event in the workflow, it will say something like um, current user uh, assigned XYZ to uh, another person or current user made a change to this task's due date. This is the full text, this is the actual content of that update. Um, and then what I would suggest for another field is to have a type, some way to categorize the different types of events um, that are happening in your app. So again, with our project management example, um, you could have a type for um, assignments, anytime a task is assigned from one person to another, uh, anytime um, you could have completed as, as a different type. Uh, so anytime a project is completed or a task, that kind of gets its own category. Um, maybe follow, anytime someone follows a task or a project or a person. So it's, it's really up to you, whatever the content of your app is. Having a type would let you categorize them, which will let you do really cool things like color coding each event. Um, you can show different icons so that it's really easy to see um, what the events are and what they're related to. So uh, I'm going to set this field type to a text so that the values can be uh, you know, the different categories. So for my project management, I could have values like completed, assignment, um, follow, uh, change, you know, to due date, some, something like that. It, it's really up to you. Uh, because this is a text value, it can kind of take anything. But, you know, keep a note here for all of the possible values so that you know uh, what they can be and so that you can stay consistent every time you do create activity events in your workflows. Um, if you want to do some extra stuff like uh, associating an event with, uh, let's say, a task, right? Let's say I have a data type for my project management app called task here which is a separate thing. It would have a title, a due date, a description of its own. Um, and I want to link activity events to tasks that they are related to. So if someone changed the due date on a task or assigned somebody to be in charge of a task, I want to have a reference to what that task was. So I can create another field here for task, which would be type task like that. 
And that way this single event can be related to that one. And you can do, you can just expand on the functionality of the activity feed. You could have a button in there that takes you to that task um, or that opens up a pop-up to show more details about that task and so on. So now that we have this um, data type here, we can start designing our feed. So I'm going to use a repeating group element. So I'll draw that on the page. We keep this pretty simple. Uh, I'm going to give this a background color uh, of white so that we can see it a little bit more clearly. Um, and we're going to do a full list layout. This really, you, you probably won't want to do full list um, when you're really working with your application. I'm going to want to see everything in one go here just for this demo, but normally an activity feed is going to rack up a lot of records. So you'll probably want to keep this to a vertical scroll or to an extended uh, vertical scroll so that it only loads as you continue to scroll down the page um, because you want to make sure that the page performs really well. You don't want to have to have bubble uh, load, you know, dozens and dozens and hundreds of activity uh, events all at once. So the setup for this repeating group, the type of content is going to be activity event like that. And then the data source, we're going to search for activity events. We're basically going to pull all of them from the database. Uh, and I would suggest sorting this by the creation date so that the newest one is at the very top and it's easy to see. From here, you can create uh, any type of constraint uh, for the search so that if you want to be specific about which events maybe filter by type uh, are displayed to the user, you can certainly do that. So now that this is set up, we can add elements to our um, repeating group here. I'm just going to give us some more rows there. And we'll start with adding an image. Uh, that's an icon. We're going to add an image to show the picture of the user. And let me make this a little bit taller. OK, so this would be the, a dynamic image for the current cells, activity events, creators, profile photo. Now profile photo, if I go back to my data structure, that is an image field I had already created for the user data type. So when they sign up or whenever they edit their profile and they save a picture, we can show that here. And this is again the current cells activity events creators profile photo. Uh, and I'm going to make sure that this is perfectly round by doing even dimensions there. And we're going to give this a roundness of 100. So now we have a, a nice circle image, whoops, circle image for, for this picture. And right underneath the picture, I'm going to have the name of the creator as well. So I'll add a little text element there, and this will be the current cell activity events creators first name and I'll do the current cell events creators last name let's get a little fancy here let's do just the first initial of the last name so I'm going to truncate the last name to the first character so we'll truncate to one and then add a period after that so now it'll be first name and then last initial just a little quick tip there for you Okay, so I'm also going to center this text for the name so that it's more or less centered under the image. Great. Now I'm going to take another text and add, this is going to be our main description where the majority of the event data is. Uh, and this will be the current cells description like that. So this is where it says, you know, XYZ has done ABC to some task. Uh, and that value will be saved when we create an event. We'll get to that in just a second. And then uh, on the right side, I'm going to add the date and timestamp for each event. OK, so this will be, I'm going to remove the style there and set this to be right aligned so that it's more um, justified right and, you know, everything kind of fits within this frame here. So this will be the current cell's creation date. You can format the date if you want it to um, display in a very specific way. Uh, by default, it'll, it'll be the date and time, but if you do the formatted as modifier, then you have a few more options for how you want the date to display. 
Okay, so now let's create a workflow to actually um, create activity events. So I'm going to use for this demo a button to uh, uh, create a task. So, okay, so when this button is clicked, we're going to first create a new thing, which is a task. So this is not yet related to our activity events. This is just something that would happen normally in the app anyway. Um, I'm going to, let's see, let's create a really quick name field for our title field for the task, which is a text so that I can give it a title. Uh, so we'll say um, sample task for the title. And this would obviously be more dynamic if it's in an actual app environment. So after this step, we're gonna to wanna to create another thing for the activity event. Okay, now remember the creator and the creation date, those are already gonna be there automatically. All we need to do now is set the description and set the type. Um, and if we wanted to have a reference to the task involved, uh, that's why we created this field here. And it might be that you will have multiple, um, where is it here, multiple fields for different types in your database depending on what the event is. If something's related to a task, then you could link to a task, but maybe something else is related to a company or a project or an invoice or a client. So you could have all the fields there kind of waiting to be linked to one of those things wherever it's appropriate. So for this task, this is going to be linked to the result of the previous step, which is this new task. And for the type, I'm going to enter new task. And then the description, this is where we can get creative. We do want to keep it you know, nice and concise. So I'm going to say something like current user, uh, first name, created a new task called, and then we'll do the result of the previous step, and then the title. So here's when I, this is where you really compose that uh, description. And again, if you have other actions creating other types of events, the description's gonna be different, the type's gonna be different. So I'm gonna run as one of my users here. Let's run as Monica. And I don't have anything in my activity feed yet, but I'll click on create task. And there we can see our task has or our event has showed up in our feed here. I can see that I need to give the date and time a little bit more room, uh, but we see her picture and it looks like her picture probably needs to stretch out to fill our circle frame. And since I'm here, I'm going to just give the date and time a little bit more room like that. Okay, so we'll refresh and there we go. So her picture's a little bit fuller now as a circle um, and this has room here. So I'm gonna click on this button again. It's gonna give me the exact same um, event because uh, I've it's a little bit static right now. The task is still the same task called sample task. I mean, technically there are two different task records in here now. You can see that I have two sample tasks, um, but because in the workflow I've typed in a static value. It looks like it's the exact same thing. Um, but this is how you would start to build it. Again, anything that needs to trigger a, an event item is where you'll want to add that create a new activity event um, action. Now, I do recommend if you anticipate having lots of different activity types um, and a lot of activity in general in your application to make use of custom events. That is something that I actually show you how to do in my VIP membership. If you're interested in learning more about that, you can click on the link below. Uh, but that's a method that will really help you consolidate your workflows and keep things very, very organized and clean, especially if you're working with a very big app that's gonna have a lot of activity. But hopefully this gets you started with um, an activity feed for your app. Uh, if you liked it, please give this video a thumbs up and thank you so much for watching.